Okay, so as you can probably see, the Luba is running, and I'm up in my attic, so you can see it's going out there, and basically what I want to test is very similar to what I did last time, but there's been a few things that have changed. First of all, there is a positioning indicator now in the app, and that will switch to a camera when it loses uh, the GPS signaling. So I'm gonna do a number of tests. First of all, I'm going to unplug the RTK and I'm just gonna let it go and just see how far it will go. There is a countdown that shows up when it's lost GPS. And so, you can see it's beeping at me. I don't know why it's beeping. Let me, let me take a look out the side. I'll show you what I'm looking at. Let's see what it does. I have level two avoidance. In fact, that was another thing I was gonna show you. All my settings. So, got cutting height, everything's kind of wet, so I just turned the cutting height all the way up to 3.9. I know some people were having trouble getting heights they wanted, either too high or too low, but all that's been working fine on my Luba 5000H. I turned up the task speed just to make things faster for us for these tests. Level 2 obstacle detection mode is right there, and then I set the, uh, the perimeter mowing laps to happen last, zigzag first. So that's what's happening right now. We're going to let it go for a little bit. Let's see, right when it makes it to the end. That's about 90 feet. All right. So I'm going to go unplug RTK right now. So that green light should be fading any second. Well, I can tell you that green light up there is off. That thing must have a massive capacitor in it. There's a lot of people that still think that the RTK needs to be plugged into the base station, and that is not true. So. All right, this is interesting. So, positioning is still fine for Luba with RTK unplugged. So, if I switch to this, you can see it says the lower R status. I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know if it's Laura or Low Ra, but that is disconnected. But Luba itself has its own 24. So it appears it's not using its camera yet. So what I'm going to do is go downstairs. I'll let the screen recording continue and I will go downstairs and my plan is to try to disrupt the satellites and see what happens. You know what I'm thinking about? Should I just let this go? See how far it'll go on its own satellites. From what I heard from Crazy Postman was that his went several minutes. Ah, now it switched to the camera. Very interesting. See that? Just switched. So now we're, we have a remaining 144 feet. Now here's the other thing that I've been told. That when this comes up it's not always accurate so i've already checked out google maps and i believe that the path that it's currently on is should be about 90 feet each way so if you see here basically from here to here should be roughly 90 feet when i checked it out on google maps it was a hundred feet from the edge of my house to the center of a path. And 
so it's obviously not going into the middle of the path it's going to the edge so i'm guessing it's around 90 feet but we'll at least know whether it's way off or not but i saw it was either on facebook or reddit somebody saying that theirs was counting down really quickly so i'll check this out in post see exactly where it was when the camera popped up and then see exactly where it was when it stops but I'm going to stay up in the attic now and forget what I told you earlier because now the camera has showed up. I'm going to let it go. So there it goes. It's turning around. So it's not stuck yet. Alright, you see it's counting down. So it shouldn't be able to make it to the end of this without running out of juice. I wonder if I could do half and half. Can I do split screen? Uh, I don't want to mess anything up. I'm going to keep it running on this app screen and not show my camera. Because you know what it looks like. I could not hear it, but it did make some audible, like, done. <laughs> it didn't say done, though. It's, it almost sounded like it said working. But that's clearly not right. Positioning status bad. Luba will resume working after positioning status restored. Okay. So that's how long it lasted without the RTK. Then it switched over to camera. That's how long it lasted with the camera. And it's not going to go any further. Just so that we understand, it's just sitting there. Which is probably what you guessed, but just to remove all doubt. The error code is just simply poor positioning status. What's interesting here is that I got this before I ever started the test. I get that all the time. I have no idea why. It, it almost seems like when it has any minor disconnection, it just thinks the RTK must be turned off. Um, it doesn't need to be checked if it's powered. It doesn't need to be restarted. Um, it just needs to move slightly to get a better, stronger signal. It, it's never an issue. RTK has always been really strong, always connected when I watch it. But it clearly must blink off and blink back on, you know, in less than a second because I get these all the time. In particular, where this charging is. You see where my, uh, sorry, I'm writing all over the screen. This is close to the house under that very small overhang. Even that is enough to mess up the connection. So I don't think with the RTK, I, it always says connected, but uh, it does mess up the GPS's ability from the mower standpoint. So in the mornings, a lot of times if I go to run it, it will say it's got poor positioning, so I can't start the task. So I'm thinking about moving the charger. No big deal. All right, well, let me plug this back in, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to leave everything running, so you'll see what symbols change. So you can see Luba still has plenty of satellites, but it's single. I'm guessing what they mean is only the RTK or only the Luba can see the satellites, and of course we know that just means only Luba can see the satellites right now. So, just gonna plug that right back in. That was probably terrible camera work, but it's plugged in. You can see that is starting up. It's blinking blue. And now green, it's not solid green yet. I wonder if I can do halvesy on this. Open in split screen camera. There we go. How about we do some of that? There you are. Now you can see what's on my camera. It's still blinking green. I don't know if the color is going to come up very well in the app. Or I'm sorry, on the camera. But it's still blinking green. Go back here. Yeah, it's not willing to run yet.
wait for it to connect. It can take some time, although I found this to be faster, if I remember right. When I turn on Luba for the first time, you know, when it gets stuck somewhere and turns itself off, when I turn it back on, it takes forever for it to connect to the satellites. And you can see the green went solid. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I can tell you green went solid and positioning status went to fix at pretty much the same time. So the app is updating in real time. And it's working again, no problems. So there's that answer. Now, let's still see if we can go downstairs and maybe put some aluminum foil over Luba and force it to switch to the camera. That way there's no, uh, maybe Luba's faking it. Maybe it really is using the satellites, even when it says it's using the camera. So let's see what we can do about that. We're going to go full screen with this, let it keep running. This will also give us a second test. If, if, if the aluminum foil will work, it will give me a second test for the camera where we'll be able to judge the distance and see if the distance is accurate. Okay, so here's my plan. I'm just going to hit pause in the app so it'll stop. I'm going to go ahead and try to form a little aluminum foil shield that will go around the Luba. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then what I'll do is get it to start running again and try to pop the aluminum foil shield on it while it's mid running. So, don't recommend this at home. Go to your friend's house and do it. Okay, so I've made that. It's really windy. Hopefully it'll stay on long enough for us to run our test. Let's see what the satellites look like. Yeah. I'm guessing it's going to reset. For positioning status. Interesting. It appears that it's started at 80 feet. I don't know why it decided. of satellites. I'm trying to kill them by waving my hand over top of it. Nope. It still has a whole bunch. Well, it lasts. It's only a co-viewing seven. There it is. Signal quality of Lupa is none, even though the satellite's Luba can see all these satellites. So, huh. I wonder if there's a, huh. It's definitely on float and not fixed, but man, I can't make it say zero. Okay, I decided even though the aluminum foil doesn't make it go to zero, it will probably simulate something like it going under a dense tree. Unfortunately, I don't have any dense trees to test, but I'm going to go ahead and try to pop this on. I'll show you what I've made. It's really windy. I'm hoping the tape will hold it on place. We'll find out. So, I'm going to hit continue. Just show you a satellite. 
lights. I want to leave it on this screen because this screen shows you the second it switches over to the camera and starts the countdown. So that's the thinking there. We need to continue to chase after it while this on. Accidentally turned the screen off. All right, we're I'm chasing it now. Got it on. Let's see what happens. Wow. Still on fix. Good gracious, it's just going like I didn't put anything on there. doing fine with the aluminum foil. What in the world? It seemed to have killed some of them when it was still, but I guess when it's driving it has a better connection to the GPS's. It's kind of crazy. I'm gonna... I heard from somebody on Facebook that simply waving your hand over a GPS will oftentimes cause it to disconnect. But doing that, it's not enough to stop this thing. It just remains fixed. Signal quality Luba is none, but the positioning status is fixed. Not sure how that works. We're gonna let it go, see what happens. Turning around. Ah, satellite's really dropping now that it's up against the house. And it switched to sing, single. And all right, it started the countdown. So let's see if the countdown continues going or if at some point it will get its own signals. There, I've got a post in the yard. This is actually for the uh, propane. Boy, that didn't sound very good. Had a little trouble starting. I better check out the bottom of my Lubo when I'm done this test. Anyway, it's just going around that. It's cool, it handles obstacle detection. We'll uh, check out what the remaining footage is. But I don't think there would be any reason it would just take a bunch of feet off for going around an obstacle. 90 feet, it looks like uh, it's gonna be a little under 90, yeah. Again, as I said earlier, I think it's about 90 feet from where it turns around to my house. So. up footage turning around oh wow yeah it ate up a bunch of footage doing a k-turn I don't know if it's necessary for me to test it if I were to do a tank turn instead of a multi-point turn if you guys want to see that you can leave comments below all right so let's get Okay, well I could clearly hear it that time. It says stop working when it's run out of footage. 
that's what it looks like with aluminum foil covering the satellite, uh, the main antenna anyway. I don't know how many additional antennas there are, but see how it says do not cover with the little symbol for satellites. That was not on my Luba 1. Continue working. Yep, as expected. I didn't really think about it, but yeah, of course, it's just going to resume without me pushing any buttons. So there you have it. That's what it looks like.